Hi everyone, welcome back to the next video of this entire series where we are talking about SharePoint Online. In the last video, we talked about metadata in SharePoint Online. We learned what is metadata, how to create metadata, and how to use metadata to organize the information in SharePoint site. In this particular video, we are going to talk about lists in SharePoint Online. We will learn what is a list in SharePoint, what sort of information it contains, what is the difference between a list and a document library. We will learn how to create a list, how to add items within a list, how to share a list with someone. We will talk about the version history for the list, how to create a list using Excel file, and much more. So let's get started. In nutshell, a list is a collection of data. For example, if we look at this Excel file, we can see a few columns like product name, category, in stock, order date, and then we have the items for each column. This is also a list that contains data. But if we compare this Excel file with a list, you can do a lot more things with a list in SharePoint. In SharePoint list, you can create items. You can share the list and the items with your users. You can create a task within a list. You can check the version history of a list in SharePoint. And if we talk about a document library, a document library contains the information about the documents. For example, the name of the document, we can see the modified date, and we can see the name of the user who last modified a particular document. But this doesn't tell us what information is inside a particular document. And if we talk about a list, we can see all the items within the list. This is a contact list that contains the name, contact number, company name, email address, and other information of the users. So a list in SharePoint is an inventory of the items. It can be a list of tasks that you can use to monitor the progress of a project or a list can be a collection of contacts. So let's see how to create a list in SharePoint site. In one of the previous videos, we created this team site with name IT, and we are going to create a list within this site. To create a list in SharePoint site, you will go to the home page of that particular site, click new and click list. You can create a list in multiple ways. You can create a list from the scratch. You can clone a list. For example, if you click from existing list, you will see all the SharePoint sites of your tenant on the left. If you already have list created in another SharePoint sites, you can select that particular site. For example, you can select this. If you have a list inside this particular site, you can select the list and this wizard will create a new list using the views and columns of that existing list. Let's go back. You can also create a list using an Excel file or using CSV file. If you have an Excel file, click from Excel, upload the Excel file and follow the instructions and this will create a list using the Excel file and all the items of the Excel file will be updated in the list. Let's go back. You can also use the pre-built templates to create a list. But for this particular demo, I'm going to create a blank list. So let's select blank list. Under name, we will give a name for this list. I'm going to create a task list for one of my projects so that I can track the progress of the project. So I will give it a name, IT project task. And under description, we can add a description as well. For example, we will monitor the progress of the project using this task. And then we have show in site navigation. If you want to show this particular list in this left navigation menu bar, you can check this option. If you do not want to reflect it, within this menu bar you can uncheck this option but later you can change this setting as well i'll show you how to do it so let's uncheck this for now and click create 
So the list is ready, but we do not see this list in the left menu bar. So to reflect this particular list link within this menu bar, we will click settings and then we will go to list settings. And here we will click list name description and navigation. And here under display this list on the quick launch, we will select yes and click save. And let's go back. And we can see this list name is now visible in quick launch menu. So now let's add few items within this list. When you create a list in SharePoint online, you get a default column with name title. But the list that you're going to create doesn't require a title column. We need columns like task name, start date, honor, and status. So let's rename this column. To rename the column, you will click on the column and go to column settings and click rename. And let's give it a name, task name, click save. We need few more columns as well. So let's click add column. And here you will see a list of all the data types that you can use to create a column, like text, choice, date and time, and so on. We talked about these data types in the last video when we talked about metadata. So the second column that we need for this list is start date. So we will use date and time data type. So let's select and click next. Let's give it a name, start date, and type will remain date and time. And let's click more options. We will check this option because this is mandatory field and click save. So the column is ready. Next, we will add another column for honor. In this column, we will add the name of the user who will be working on a particular task. So again, we will go to add column and this time we will select person data time and go next and let's give it a name honor. Type will remain person or group. If you want to show the profile photos of the users, you can turn this option to on. Then go to more options. We will turn this option to on because we need multiple users within this column. And we will turn this option to on as well because we want the users to update this field. They can't leave this field blank. So after this, let's click save. And our third column is ready. Now we need another column for status from where we will monitor the progress of the task. So let's click add column and this time we will select text, go next and the name of the column will be status. Type will remain single line of text. Click more options and let's turn this option to on and click save. So the columns are ready. Now it's time to add the information under these columns. There are multiple ways to add information within these columns. If you want to add a couple of items, you can select add new item at the top. This will open a form where you can see all the columns that we just added within the list. So let's fill in the details. Task, let's give it a name like create business case and let's select the start date 2nd of august and let's add the honor so i'm assigning this task to bob ross and status will be not started and click save so like this you can add the items under each column we can also click edit in grid view and we can add the items from here also Let's add few items. And once you have added all the items, click exit grid view. So the list is ready and we can track the progress of each task from here. If you want to modify a particular item, select the item and click edit. 
this will again open the same form let's modify some values and let's make it started and click save now in one of the previous videos we talked about version history for documents a list also has a version history but the version history for the list is quite different if we go to a document library and right click a document go to version history we can see here the date and time when this document was modified and we can see who modified this document but if we go to a list and right click version, version history, history we can see here date and time when this particular list was modified we can see who modified it but here we can also see what changes were made within this particular item which is not available within the version history of the documents in document library we can also see the versions for this list and if you want to restore the list to a previous version click on this drop down click restore and click ok now this will create another version for this particular item now let's see how to share a list or the items of a list with the users to share the complete list with someone you will click share this will open the sharing settings type the name with whom you want to share this particular list you can also give the permissions to this user over this list when you share a list with someone you will get three permissions can edit list means the user will be able to add or remove columns within the list he can add or remove items from a list and add or remove the views in a list then we have can edit items if this permission is assigned user can only modify the items within the list he will not be able to modify the list and then we have can view with this permission the user can only view the list he will not be able to make any changes within the list or the items so let's say i want to give can edit list permission to this user and let's click send and if you want to share a particular item with someone select the item right click click share or select the item click three dots click share this will again open the sharing settings and let's share it again with bob ross let's give him edit permission and click send now this user will receive two notifications so let's go to his mailbox and here we can see two emails this is for the complete list it project task let's open this link and the other notification is for individual item create business case so let's open this as well so this is how it will look like the user has edit permission so he will click edit all and here he can make changes and let's say this task is completed and click save and similarly he has access or edit permission on the complete list so he can click edit in grid view he can add new items or he can modify the existing items and let me refresh this list and we can see the change that bob ross made create support ticket and he has completed this task now if you want to delete an item from the list select the item click three dots and click delete and click delete again now this item will move to the first stage recycle bin if you want to restore this item go to recycle bin and we can see this particular item is here if you want to restore select the item click restore and this particular item will be placed back to its original location now let's see how to create a list using an excel file i have one excel file that contains 
the contacts of few users and I want to create a list using this Excel file. So we will go to the home page of this site. Click new, click list and click from Excel and let's upload the file contact list. Now the file that we have, this contains the data in rows and columns, but we need to format this particular data in table. So we will click open. This will open the Excel file that we just uploaded. So you will select all the data, select format as table, and let's click on one of the tables and click OK. And now you need to remove this filter as well. So for that, you will click sort and filter and click filter. So the filter is removed. Let's go back and let's click refresh. So now we can see all the data that we have within our Excel file. However, the contact number is not in the correct format. So we will do this later. Go next and let's give it a name contact list. Name is fine. We want to show this list in navigation menu and click create. So the list is ready, but we need to correct this. So let's go to column, column settings and click edit. And here let's go to more options. And you need to disable this option. Use thousands separator and click save. And now we have the mobile number in correct format. So that is all for today. If you learned something new from this particular video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. And if you have questions or suggestions, feel free to write them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.